Peace and blessings. Yes, yes. You know we back with another one. It's your girl Mambo Hathor Urzali Akanatan, aka the Boosted Diva. And yes, we are celebrating this dark goddess, this powerful goddess in Haitian voodoo, Mama Brigitte. Now, as you all know, the month of November is a very powerful month when it comes to Mama Brigitte. And the gay day all together, Medvon Samdi, the whole crew, they get down where we honor and venerate our ancestors no longer here with us. Ancestral veneration is very, very important in Asian voodoo and really all over in the practices of magic. As you know, you have to give it up, big it up for those that were there that paved the way from the family basis all the way down. So yes, we are going to be talking about some goodies as it pertains to the goddess, Mama Brigitte, also known as Grand Brigitte. Now, let us dig into the origins. Now, when it comes down to the origins, you guys have to understand that the black woman is the superior mitochondrial DNA of all existence all over this planet, okay? There's never been a time, period. So once we have that established, let's move on into where the origins really come from to give us the Loa Mama Brigitte. Now, um, we have to understand, point blank period, you know, race has always been something that has been created to put some of the greatest divides within our society, a weapon of mass division. And, you know, that causes a great amount of confusion. So here we are coming to clear it on up, okay? Now, when we look at the energy or the energy of origin to Mama Brigitte, you have that in Europe, in the time of the Moorish Empire, you had the Slavics, which were trading and also hunting and pretty much doing the largest human trafficking that there was at that time. One of the delicacies or exotic energy or the, uh, women, if you will, when it came down to the Moors was the albino, blonde hair, blue eyed woman for magical purposes, sexual magic, on and so forth, which again, in Africa, if you know about the albinism, it is something that is still, in a sense, hunted, rare, and used for magical purposes. Or, they used to deal with the, or request, the redhead, green-eyed women dealing as gypsies that they were, and it was deemed that they had psychic powers, okay? And where that came from was when you look at the word gypsies, Egypt, gypsies, they were half Egyptian blood and half European blood. So that's where they were saying the psychic powers were coming from. Now, if we look even into today, the standard of beauty was honestly created by the Moors in saying that blonde hair, blue eyed was deemed exotic. Also, let's not forget, they are the ones who came with this whole culture of the brothels. Okay, brothels was something that were used as, again, your modern-day whorehouse, if you will, or the place where that kind of activity, the strip club, you know, the place where the men came for womanly entertainment. So, they are the ones who brought that tradition very, very strongly within this. Now, let's not also forget, when we're talking about modern-day white Europeans, if you will, this is none other in correlation to Ethiopian albinos or East Indians, okay? This is where their roots originated from. So just letting you see how it all ties in, all right? Now, when we got into the fall of the Moorish Empire, a couple of things was going down, all right? Because again, these women were used as sex slaves, if you will, so on and so forth, the brothel lifestyle, etc. However, when the Moorish started to fall, when the Moorish Empire started to take a hit, this is what went down. Due to the energy of the Crusades and the church, okay, there was a stigma or a sense of creating that anything with melanated blood, triple six, six protons, six electrons, six neutrons, that was deemed the mark of the beast, okay, or if you will, 
um, impure, all right? They were trying to, quote, unquote, purify their race, okay, in the area that they were in. So this was the beginning of the fall of the Moorish Empire. So this is what they did. They started to do a genealogy war, which consisted of if a white and a black what did they do? Create a mulatto. A mulatto and a white would create about 70% white. Now you take a white and you put together that 70%, you've got 100% white European Caucasian. Okay, this went on for more than hundreds of years, y'all, as far as them making sure that they could wipe out and quote unquote purify their race. Okay, so the fall of the Moorish Empire brought a lot of change up in things. Now, when we go into the continuous fall, what did this leave? It left what we call, quote unquote, the bastardized children. Okay, because the, the leftovers of this uh, mulatto, of the mulatto children, okay, of the Moors, were deemed as second class citizens. They were not looked at as anything. They were persecuted, and it came to the point where they were downright outlawed, okay? So I say all this to say so you understand that the origin of Mama Brigitte, as it stems from Europe, as it stems from London specifically, was um, a very huge case in point in this situation. It's coming as a biracial woman, also, i.e., also a white woman, okay again what based on the blending that we're talking about here all right she can appear in those kinds of ways now as this took place it started to create some situations where they were no longer needed they were filling up the brothels doing the sex work doing certain things as slaves but as the moors had to go they had to go right along with them so guess what europe was furthering trying to purify their particular region and their area and what did they do they wanted to get their prison cells emptied out they were trying to empty out the prison cells for the main reason of again say of the church saying that you know they're purifying their place and they're doing what they need to do to make things better etc etc now when this took place there was new land in the new world coming and deeming in for opportunity. Now, where they were no longer needed, prisons were now getting rid of the criminals, getting rid of the so-called have-nots, the ones that were the rejects, if you will. Again, gay day type of energy, the rejects, the criminals. So, when that happened, there was opportunity that they heard about the new world. So, all of these women, okay, that were filling up these brothels, these criminals, etc., this reject crew took on to come to the new world now what was that new world well that was the americas i.e i.e.t now before the united states could have the blueprint of come one come all you're accepted as long as you land on this sacred land on this you know god loving country we will take you in we will nurture you you will find work you will find the land of opportunity right well, I'll tell you something. IET was that place. Now, at that time, again, French colonization was going on. But at that time, it still was such a rich piece of land. You had nothing but all kinds of energy going on. You had the gold. You had copper. You had zinc. There was riches there. So they came in to become indentured servants. Okay. Now, the word and term that was used for them was called the affranchi. Okay, privilege, the privileged, if you will, which means they were what we would call here in America the house niggas in a sense. They were going to be working inside. They were going to be doing things closer to master, if you will, or the master at the time, slave master. Um, and so that's how that began with these mulatto women. Now, it gets deeper up in here because when they got there and saw the kind of oppression when they settled into IT as the indentured servants, the Afrashi, they started to see the problems that were going on, the torture, the slavery, the madness. They would go on to play a huge and pivotal role within the IT revolution. How so, you might ask? Well, one of the things that started to happen was the Mama Brigitte order, okay? There was what we call the Bouzet Society. Now, in the 
modern day Haitian terminology, Buzan is known as a bitch or a hoe or something of that nature. However, when we really break down that term, do we know what it really signifies? Boo means boo boo un pil. All right, root word of having a lot. Zen is information, getting the juice, getting the intel on what's going down. What we call Buzan actually created a secret society. Okay, now the whole energy behind what they were doing with the Mama Brigitte energy, okay, having much of this going on is that it formed as a secret society the secret society dealt with women knowing how to do what weaponize, weaponize the power of the v to be able to get what they needed information they were the ones responsible for going back and forth to know what was really going on within the pre-planning all the way into the Aisian revolution now they created poisons they were very very important because they were the master of the skies they didn't see them coming because they were indoors they were more comfortable with the slave master so it was easier for them to infiltrate and get the information and source knowledge they needed to be able to send to the other ones that were mobilizing for the revolution in different regions etc so they actually played a very very important role okay they helped the soldiers to go against each other. They used magic, okay, sex magic. Also, the magic of women, womanhood, joining with each other to get the job done, okay? There was many, 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 many of these women, and they're not talked about because simply for the fact that when it comes to this, people out there who were trying to write our history want us to believe that it was not a joint effort you had a beautiful mixture of the indigenous arawak slash tainos you had the africans that had come in from west africa you had these indentures are coming from europe it was a magnificent blend going on okay to be able to create what this revolution really was joint effort they never want you to know that it's really about good versus evil rich versus poor okay right versus the wrong all right so within that said they served as top spies within getting and gathering the intel the information they were so so important in this role now what we also want to mention is that when we're talking about that one of the top women that they don't really talk about, okay, is a madame, a first lady, if you will, okay, which is called Jut, okay? Now, Jut was a beautiful woman, a mulatto, who dealt with the power of, again, being a spy, being what she needed to be. She served as a first lady. Now, when I say first lady, let me break this down so you understand. First lady deals with what we call having a first lady to bring in intel and information in different regions. You have uh, Saint-Marc, you have Leogan, you have, for example, Miraguan, you have okay, Petronville. You had different women who were coming in and bringing in the intel what was needed from different regions to get the source information to be able to fight the revolution to get up-to-date information on who was doing what what the next move was etc so it was a very powerful powerful role that these women played this Buzan society this secret society of women okay now it was interesting because when we look at the Brigitte order the mama Brigitte order okay um, she, Mama Brigitte, truly, when we look at the root word going here, she was a madame. Now, let me explain and break down that whole energy of the madame. Many people think when you say Mama Brigitte that you're talking about a mother, a mama, thing of that nature. No, my madame is mama, short for Mama Brigitte. She was the head poncho. She was the one running the show. She knew what to do. She served as the madame, if you will, to the rest of the women. Okay? Now, in opposition to that, on the other side of the facet, you have the elder, mom, the elder Brigitte, which is Grand Brigitte. Now, Grand Brigitte is what we call the elder who, again, can't do that no more, passes the baton over to the youth, 
to the younger one. All right, she was the boss in the beginning, the elder, who now is going to take care of these women by doing some of the following, making sure they're fed. If there's coffee, if there's something that needs to be done, cleaning the sheets, healing for those that need their healing. Something happened. They need to get their healing going. Um, giving them even foreseeing of what to look out for. She was the elder. She was a patron in there of that motherly nature. So that motherly nature, when you're talking about that, is coming from Gun Brigitte. Okay? That is coming from the Gun Brigitte energy. Now, when it comes down to this particular power, and as we move further into the importance of this all, okay, we have to understand one thing. The revolution would have never been the same, would not have ever gotten certain functions of strategy had it not been for these brave women who went into this Buzan society, all right, to be able to use the weaponization of their sexuality, all right, of the magic, of that voodoo, of that juju, to get it going, to get what they needed, to be able to get the right intel at the right time to continue in this revolution. You even go down to the fact that when they had the British, okay, helped majorly, and the, these women were, were responsible for it as far as when we're talking about the French, who... If there was this particular boat that came in with um, weapons and ammunition at said time, if it had not been for the British, for the London aspect, these indentured servants, okay, these mulattoes, these women specifically, then the revolution as we know it could have been hugely impacted and jeopardized because that was a founding factor in the revolution as far if a win or no win could have taken place. Had they have gotten more weaponized and um, guns and all of that ammunition, it could have been a lot more difficult to win the battle. Okay, so again, this is just to show you, once again, they don't speak on the power of what these women were doing and the kind of order and the kind of energy that it took to get it going. All right? Characteristics. Well, Mama Brigitte, throughout the history of time with her energy, has always been a goddess of freedom, an energy of expression, the energy of death, the rebirth. Um, she is that healing frequency. She is that unapologetic, vibrant energy that is always there to fight back for the women out there that are trying to survive and that kind of frequency, she lines, aligns up with all of that. Now, when we look at it through history of time, we know that in ancient Kemet, you have Neptis, you have um, Lilith, okay, in the biblical sense, you have Ishtar in ancient Sumeria, you have Oya in Ifa, and in some aspects of Hinduism, you have Kali as well. Now, Mama Brigitte is often seen with her clearly, which is some white rum in those so hot, hot peppers. And she will always have, again, the baton, which is infamous for the Bundai dance, which I was dancing earlier in this video. So her colors traditionally are purple, black, and white. And remember, she is Mama Brigitte. She's a madame. She madames a lot of times do walk with like their stick or their, you know, their baton. Once again, you know what I mean? The pimp cane, if you will. Um, they're running the show. She is a madame. She's the boss. Now, also when we talk about Gun Brigitte, we know Gun Brigitte comes um, a bit more reserved. She's the elder. A lot of times she could be more of a darker skinned woman. She could be. Um, a lot more healing, a lot more motherly in her nurturing energy. She's the boss, but the boss that is the elder now. You know what I mean? She's been there, done that. So she's over here running the show from afar, making the big moves, calling the shots from a distance on them. Okay? So yes, indeed, for Gun Brigitte's energy. So the characteristics are pretty much, that's how that energy is. Again, the energy of survival, those that have been sexually, mentally, uh, abused, you know, spiritually abused even, she stands up, okay, her power is very strong when it comes to that. Okay, so let's talk about pop culture. Now, you know, in Hollywood, and even in this music industry, this energy of Baon Samdi, Mama Brigitte, the Gede, they run the show. 
okay? Let's take a look at the music industry lately. All these emerging female rappers, when you take a look at Nicki Minaj, you look at Trina, that were, again, coming from this stripping kind of culture, the vulgarity, the I'm in control, I'm the boss, amongst many other men in the crew, you know, that kind of energy. You look at modern day like Megan Thee Stallion, the Cash Doll, you know, you're looking at Cardi B, who actually came from the upbringing of the strip club. You're looking at Eve even. Many different women in the female rapping function really came with this very strong, you know, I'm a boss and, you know, I've had to do what I had to do to survive type of energy. Um, you look at this new artist too. Um, her name is Doja Cat. Um, if you even peep her new video, her new video called I'm a Cat, listen, it's all Mama Brigitte through and through up in there, okay? Down to the cane, the whole nine. So, anywho, when you look at Halloween, Nicki Minaj had just, just went as um, uh, Haley Quinn, which was, you know, that whole energy with Joker and Haley Quinn and all of that thing. Listen, the energy is so thick in the music industry, even down to the men as well. Um, I mean, it just get we can go on and on, but really and truly, it's been a real takeover as of lately with that Mama Brigitte energy. Now, when we go into deeper looking at, again, this stripper culture, the strip club has always been a place where, you know, you can go to get intel, you're going in to have a good time, but many times, one opposing side to another may be up in there, the women are giving intel about who was coming in and out of there, you know, it's turned into an economic situation over there too, for the women, so the strip club, again, is the modern day brothels, okay, that's all it is, a modern day brothel, and Again, always serves as a gateway for information, all right? So when you see women are over here coining the term of, you know, I'm the baddest bitch or, you know, I'm that bitch, this is, again, that energy coming from the booze and that business society, that whole, you know, I could run the show type of thing. I'm here and I'm a boss it using what I got. Again, weaponizing the V, uh, the power of the V to, you know, what did it get what they want out of life or to survive and that kind of thing. Now, when you go into the movie scene, the movie scene, oh my gosh, she's crawling everywhere within that too. Couple of movies, um, we've got the Eartha Kit found it. Now Eartha Kit is interesting altogether because she is biracial. Okay, Eartha Kit played our very first Catwoman. And Catwoman's story is that she's a hardworking um, or a young girl who's out there trying to fend in the streets to survive. And she has to do what she has to do, but ultimately will come into some powers that will help her. But in the beginning, you know, she's no parents around, orphan type of child, raised on the streets type of thing. So again, you've got this other movie called, endless of movies. Um, we've got La Femme Nikita, The Red Sparrow as of recently. You've got um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. In the upcoming Marvel, y'all know I love you some Marvel. The upcoming Marvel, The Black Widow, that energy will be very strong. Pay attention to that. Okay, you've got also Marilyn Monroe. Let's talk about Marilyn Monroe for a second. Another biracial whose real hair color is red by the way it got dyed after she wanted to get into a certain look now she was none other than a cia agent which many do not know and what was she doing again weaponizing her beauty the standard of her beauty of her way of knowing how to flirt and how to whatever to gain what intel that's what they do so she was a top spy Okay, this has been going on for a very, very long time. Again, weaponizing that beauty and the sexuality to get it going. All right. Now, you even have also Josephine Baker, who at her time, you know, she defeated many, many odds for her genre of what she was doing. And again, had to master her femininity, her sexuality. Okay, her flirt, her entertainment, again, her way as a feminine principle, but still to overcome and to be in the position that she had arrived in so shout out to the ancestor josephine baker and all the other ones marilyn monroe again i mean you know all the have come and gone but again this energy is so thick you've got i mean you just cannot deny it. and we got to keep it real this feminist movement that's been going on lately has a very very influence a very um, heavy influence 
with Mama Brigitte. Okay, that whole Mama Brigitte energy is undeniable. I mean, it's all over the industry, what people tend to gravitate to. You know, these days, the whole season of the top, 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 top deliciouses and the, all of that, the Instagram models and the whole nine. You know, we are in a culture where the vulgarity, I mean, it's out there. It's serious. And the women are showing that they bossing it up while doing it. Okay, as again, means of survival if you will now i'm about to have y'all up on game with a whole family that's got this whole thing locked with the mama brigitte gun brigitte energy the kardashian family now let's break this down so chris jenna who in this case is the gun brigitte principal she went in and became the top pond head poncho okay for what all her daughters to be a form of Mama Brigitte, to be desired after using first Kim Kardashian, her top head poncho, all right, so elder because she used to be doing her thing too back in the day, and then got too old, so then listen, had nothing but what, a whole bunch of her daughters, she had a son, but used the daughter frequency, the feminine principle, once again, sexualized all of them, you looking at every last one, no matter what surgery, what they had to do to be appeasing, to be beautiful, to be lusted after, she made sure it was done. So she was the gun bridge, she made sure they were taken care of, whatever they needed to be able to what? Be beautiful. Do what they need. Now check this out. Kim Kardashian marries who? Kanye West. Has her children with him and everything. Kanye West is that bound energy straight through and through. Check it out. What did he do? He got into a car accident and what? Resurrected. So he cheated death in a sense. He's back. When he came back, what are some of the things? Kanye West gotten best known for what? Jesus walks. The cross. The energy of using the cross. Even to this day now, he's going around and doing sermons at churches and stuff. All of that quah. The cross energy. Okay? So the thing is, Kanye, again, is another thing he likes is being addicted to porn. Who? Go figures. The energy of what? Raise up sexual energy, sexuality, okay? And then again, resurrected in sexual energy, okay? And then what? He is one of the only dudes in the celebrity world that deal with Trump. And if y'all remember, I told y'all a while ago, Donald Trump, whether you like him or not, it's a personal opinion, but that was a whole bound one and gay day family that came up in that White House for the time that he was there along with his wife you look at his wife in politics even as we go into that his wife is what red hair green eyes she was what in the past a erotic model okay a model sought after and she's a foreigner okay from russia and has been deemed and spoken about many a times referred to as a spy okay from an outside coming in to survey to watch to handle what it is they get gather the intel using what the beauty the sexual energy the all that good the power of the v all right so all of this it's crazy when you look at it all of these things ain't no coincidences this energy is real the kardashians they made sure every one of them if they was having a baby gonna be with a black man what's the black man the sacred phallus his phallus is the most sought after thing in the world, the black man's phallus, okay? It is sacred to all other women of all other races. So there you have it with that pop culture. It's intense. You know, Kim Kardashian was Mama Brigitte. She had Kris Jenner, her gun Brigitte. And she, Kris Jenner made a whole living off of her children, okay? Sexualizing and making them beautiful to the public to do what they needed to do. Huh. So just to show you how it is so heavily influential with Mama Brigitte and this Brigitte energy all together. So my personal experience when it comes to Mama Brigitte, well, when it comes to her in terms of mounting, um, you know, when she comes into possession, she is very fun. She uh, invokes a lot of laughter, joking, some dirty jokes. She is always going to make sure there's a celebration going on. Um, her energy is just very filling in that sense. But she does give you a strong sense of strength. You know, she does come very much so in uh, coming on the terms of honesty, being blunt. You know, the energy also of healing even. So there's just so much to her. But her energy overall, definitely, um, when she comes into possession, 
is uh, life of the party, you know, um, <clears throat> definitely. So when it comes to, um, you know, the power of Mama Brigitte, you have to understand her as a um, loa. One of the powerful things that we have to remember is her vital role, okay, in the Haitian Revolution. Many did not ever want to give her the sunshine, although I know that we had Ezri Danto and Ogu Ferrai and countless others and things. But we have to understand, she was granted immortality for her great role, her vital role, her good deeds were measured, okay, to be accepted into the world of the Guinea. So she holds a lot of weight, quietly kept. Her role was very important in the Haitian Revolution. Now, uh, this is a beautiful reminder of letting us know that it is not about color. It is not about some type of a race thing. There were many races that were involved. The mulattoes, the Arawak Indians, you know, our Africans. The whole beautiful um, coming together. Okay, because remember, in the revolution, had it not been for Mama Brigitte, the energy of the uh, war could have been, or the revolution was could have been very, very, very different. Okay, she stopped, all right, the uh, boating come from coming in. You have to remember that. The French were coming in, and they were going to have more supplies. And it was for energies like the Bouza Société that made sure that the energy dealing with those English, okay, the London, the British, if you will, intercepted that. So again, such a valuable role was played. Now, she loves to eat, when we're talking about foods and stuff, she loves to eat, uh, well first I should say drink her clearly, the infamous clearly, we know. That is that energy of the, of the white rum with the peppers. And I'm talking about hot, okay, pima, pima, pima. And even more, Bima, she don't be playing. Now, there is a myth out there that I want to clear up. Now, many people, when Giddy season comes around, they automatically expect that um, Mama Brigitte's coming with that rum, with them peppers infused, and it's just rubbing on them genitals like they're crazy or something. Now, let me explain the science on that so we can be clear on how that works, okay? Now, listen, down there is your root chakra, okay? The chakra that stimulates. The stimulation, when a woman or the, the person being possessed is not sexually active, okay, for a while, what happens is to create a pulsation, to create that se sexual, sensual effect, okay, that is rubbed in that area to create some heat so that okay that the person being um that the healing that needs to take place can take place mama brigitte needs that vessel to be hot spicy and activated if you will so she could go into the sexual healing that she does now on the sexual healing part let me say this in dreams as it comes to her in the dream world okay sexuality is where you will usually see her she can come in a form of a mulatto or a white woman even okay again with that principle of the red hair the green eyes etc etc and she could come there and she'll have again that energy of sexual healing remember Marvin Gaye it's all about that sexual healing her sexuality and her sex is a portal okay of healing also when we're talking about men who face infertility things of like the sacred phallus getting up you know what i mean these kinds of things libido and all that a lot of times mama brigitte will help come in and help deal with that as opposed to also the women bound sandy will come in and heat up things with his sacred phallus energy so they will escort with each other to get healing very large amounts of healing done okay um that is the power that they possess now when it comes to Mama Brigitte, we have to understand she is such a patron energy for any of those in society, especially the women, okay, that they try to cast a shade on. Those that have been trying to survive, that have been trying to just do what they had to do for their family, and they see beauty is used or was used as a weapon at that time for them to be able to survive and to feed themselves and take care of themselves, 
um that was what their phase was at that moment okay or it might have been what they needed to do to get by at the time it don't condemn somebody else or judge somebody else because that's where they came from or that's what was handed to them within life okay you are beautiful you are worthy you are needed and you would always be a patron saint for mama brigitte that gun brigitte energy okay point blank no matter what you are always having what we call value when it comes to the world of voodoo okay now also people forget that one of the oldest jobs in the world is one in these sexual forms and things of that nature okay that kind of entertainment the brothels that kind of thing been around for ages all right so one cannot go and condemn another or try to judge that's the thing that a society does the most which is so unfair now again those may just be a phase in that person's life but you embrace it for all that it is and don't be ashamed everybody has a different story to tell we are all on a journey on on a path okay the energy of fighting and survival is what mama brigitte's all about to be honest with you when you look at the feminist movement even so much of mama brigitte's energy is involved in that you know i'm a boss i'm using the power of the v to get what i want to control to be on top things of that nature so you know one can judge because everything everything and i repeat everything has very strong influence from the world of voodoo the spirit world run this thing i don't know how many times i gotta tell y'all that's what it's about and it's what that's what it will always be all right those that's in the know they know and they show it on them tv screens the movies everything you name it now when we go into uh, Mama Brigitte, we also have to just remember, this is not, again, I'm going to say this, the thing that is created to divide us and cause all this confusion and craziness is this race card that's always being played, okay, especially here in America, and then ultimately all over, but, I mean, we have to come to the point and understand that this is the thing, the Loa gave Mama Brigitte as a vessel of what she was at that time, no matter what her color was or anything, based upon her deeds and her good doings and the things that she came to do her devotion okay her contribution to fighting oppression all right so at the end of the day we need every race we need everyone to be a part of restoring the greatness that is in this sacred and ancient tradition okay and its people all right we have to see that at the end of the day spirit is what calls people not people calling people you have no idea what the law have in store. They just getting started. And for another thing, for those trying to say to someone, oh, because they're not Haitian, that they can't have the law with them and they can't interact with the law, excuse me? Pardon. Check yourself at the door. Again, trying to condemn another and stop another from getting involved when spirit is calling out to them. The spirit has a message for everyone, okay? At different times and different phases in their life. One cannot sit there and try to judge and be the one saying that one is not. No, when you're pulled, like I said, going back to my video about being chosen, inheritance, walker. When you are called out, there ain't nothing nobody gonna come tell you. You go with what you feel inside. What you feel is calling out to you. Your divine calling of the ancestors of the spirit world, the world of the Guinea, okay? So, <clears throat> end on that. Please close that chapter as well. Because this, if you have learned nothing else, you know that it is not about a color right now. This is about intellect. This is about, again, right versus wrong, rich versus poor, okay? The have, the have nots, good versus the evil, again, and just creating a balance at the end of the day. Everything is balanced. Mother Earth is tired of us bickering over minimal and minute things okay again those that will have the power to be able to be around and in presence of the guinea world and of voodoo to go deeper you're called upon okay always and if you're coming again to fight the good fight to deal with these situations we have at hand in humanity as a whole then you know you're coming to the right place now, we have to remember voodoo. Voodoo freed the world at one point. IET was a pillar in showing and giving the example as to how it was done. And then from there opened its doors to people from all over the world to come and bask in that freedom. From Jews all the way down to the continued Europeans, the Polish. I mean, we can go on and on 
and on about that. So we have to understand that voodoo is what freed, and it can do it again. It was fighting the hugest monster we've ever been faced with, which is slavery. But let us be fair to understand slavery happened on both sides of the coin. So to condemn one over another, because again, those very same women that came in and did what they had to do at that time, okay, were sex slaves. They began in brothels being sex slaves, okay, being sold off for ritualistic purposes, for personal fetish purposes, the whole night, okay? So at the end of the day, this is about a oneness. This is about coming together. This is about using the power of the magic that is you, of the magic that is the world of the Guinea, of the spirit world, bringing those to come and join forces as one. So that we can conquer once again. So that we can overcome these obstacles that Mother Earth and humanity is facing at the moment. We've got work to do. The more that we wait, the more time that we waste. And so with that, I am giving all kinds of salutes. Shout out to Shane Kun Studios. And just a notice so you guys understand, we will now be doing short skits going more in depth in detail giving you even more cinematographic okay effects to these beautiful videos that are educating on the loa for those that would like to donate that would like to contribute to this movement as we're really going to be stepping it up a notch for these skits to, to to happen we need your help and we're going to always need your support your input when you donate, you can email me as well and let me know what loi you would like to see next upon my channel, okay? Because we are moving up and moving forward. We're going into a new century, y'all, okay? So we're going to be looking for actors. We'll be looking for different people to play these roles in these skits. I am so excited because it's just us, again, giving more of the power and the richness of this beautiful culture, of this beautiful Aisian culture and tradition, okay? This beautiful African culture and tradition. This beautiful Arawak Taino tradition, okay? And even this beautiful mulatto, if you will, tradition, all right? Because at the end of the day, all played a part. So we do not neglect any of those sides. We give thanks to all of the ancestors because all that contributed is the reason why I could be sitting here, why you could be watching, commenting, and doing the works that you're supposed to do. So once again, I want you to uh, click on the links at the bottom of this video, okay? Follow me on the IG, the face, you know, the whole nine. All the information will be there to book all the services that you need, the consultations, the readings, etc., the classes, so important, and so on and so forth, okay? At the end of the day, it takes a village, okay? Let us combine and join our forces so that we can fight for the greater good of our planet, of our next generations to come. This is what this is all about, okay? So we are going to keep moving in the strength of voodoo. This is Gede season, so the party has just begun. Make sure you also check out that song, which is my song, Voodoo Dance by Street Rocks, okay? Check that out, and we will have some more developments on that as we move along in the journey. Be well, take care of yourself love one another, and let's keep the power of voodoo moving. Share, like, and comment on this video, and let's keep this power and this energy moving strong. Kwa, kwa la kwa, kwa de kwa, kwa sambo, aibobo.